Make sure you didn't miss this, the season premiere of my single player Let's Play series, Udaldor's Shenanigans. Hey there everyone, Udaldor here and welcome back to my Android IO tutorial series. Today we're taking a look at the zombie generator, uh, which is going to generate power for you in Android IO. Now, this is a pretty straightforward way of generating power, but I've seen a surprisingly large amount of questions on IRC and forums and whatnot about how this thing works. Uh, so I thought I'd just uh, spotlight it real quick like I do with everything else. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and shouldn't take very long at all. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at uh, is how you're gonna make this thing, right? So you're gonna need three machines before you can actually get this thing running. You're gonna need a slice and splice, an alloy smelter and the VAT. Right, so the VAT is going to generate nutrient distillation for you, which is the fuel that the zombie generator uh, runs on. So to get yourself this, just input some water, uh, some kind of meat and sugar or nether wart or mushrooms or similar things. You can check this out in NEI, and that's going to get you nutrient distillation. Now, once you've got that, you can make yourself the generator itself. So the first thing you're going to need to make is some energetic alloy, which is just redstone, glowstone, and gold combined in the alloy smelter. And once you've uh, made that stuff, you need to go ahead and place those two ingots in the slice and splice. Combine that with a zombie head. So one of these guys. Some silicon, which you can get by pulverized, uh, sorry, sag milling uh, clay or or uh, sand and lastly a basic capacitor which is pretty simple to make as well it's just uh, some redstone copper and gold nuggets so once you've got yourself these the slice and splice will go ahead and make your uh, for you a zombie electrode now this is one part in the uh, recipe for the zombie generator. Apart from that, you're going to need to make yourself some fused quartz, which is just, well, you saw it there, four nether quartz uh, combined, and also some electrical steel, which is uh, silicon, coal powder, and iron. Once you've got yourself all of this, you're all ready to make yourself the zombie generator. So we have a simple setup over here with the zombie generator, which generates 80 RF per tick and uh, a portable tank from thermal expansion, which is going to push the liquids into the generator, right? So this is where, where people start to get confused about this. Now they've actually added a tooltip now, uh, saying that you need 1400 millibuckets for it to turn on. Now the internal uh, the internal tank stores two buckets, right? So 2000 millibuckets. And this is where people were confused before because it didn't run if you just pumped it a little bit. So if we go ahead and flip this on for just a while, it's going to fill the tank up. And you can see uh, that since we're, we're above 70%, we're above, uh, above 1400 uh, millibuckets, it's going to start generating power for us, uh, 80 RF per tick, which gives you 1600 RF per second. Now, the rate of which this... Uh, nutrient distillation is consumed, you can see down here. So 10 ticks, uh, it takes for each millibucket to be consumed. You can actually see that here if you just count, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So uh, two millibuckets per second, pretty much. So that's pretty cool. Now let's just take a quick look at how we can configure the zombie generator to work. What we have here is a fluid tank with nutrient distillation right next to the zombie generator, which is also uh, put right next to a basic capacitor bank. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. We have the configure IO button here, which you can find in most Ender IO machines. And with it, you can uh, set the zombie generator to pull fluids from any side of the block, right? So what we can go ahead and do is just right click uh, on the side which connects to the tank and that's going to set it to pull, and it's going to pull the fluids from the fluid tank. You can see it's draining here at the same pace the liquid is consumed inside the generator, and we're starting to generate power, and it's automatically filling up the capacitor bank at, you can see up uh, on Wayla, a pace of 80 RF per tick. Very, very cool. Now, aside from this automatic pull function, we also have the redstone mode. 
now is right now set to always active, so it'll run whenever it can run. But we can also set it to active with signal, and you can see it instantly just stopped running, not generating any power or draining any liquids. That's because the redstone signal is currently turned off. Go ahead and turn it on. It's going to start uh, generating power for us again. Uh, we can also set this to active without signal, which is just the other way around, so redstone will turn it off. And lastly, you can set it to never active, which uh, isn't very useful. So there you go. That's the zombie generator. It wasn't much harder than that. Uh, now make sure to check out the other Enderreal tutorial vid videos that I have out there. And also don't forget to check out my Let's Play videos. Recently started a single player Let's Play series, uh, series which there was a link to earlier in the video. Uh, so make sure you check that out and leave some feedback in the comments. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you guys next time. Take care everyone and have fun with the zombie generator. <laughs>